Here we have an example of, of, a, of conducting a one-way ANOVA. In this sample, we've got 13 observations. The 13 observations are grouped into three different groups according to the neighborhood type that the, that the person lives in. So we've got um, uh, suburban neighborhoods, rural neighborhoods, and inner city neighborhoods. So observations 1 through 4 live in the suburbs, 5 through 8 in the rural areas, and 9 through, thir nine through 13 live in the inner city. The variable that we're investigating is the number of shopping trips each individual takes per week by foot. So we have um, individual 1 takes 0 trips per week, individual 2 takes 1 trip per week, and so on. The question is, does the neighborhood urban form, that's our grouping variable, does that affect the number of walking trips people make for shopping activities? And we want to be able to say, yes, urban form has, a, has an effect on shopping activities, or no, it doesn't. And we want to be able to do it at a level of 95% confidence. Or we want the significance level to be set at 5%. So let's start with the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis will just be that the three means are equal. So the number of walking trips done by group one, the average equals the average number of walking trips done by the respondents in group two, equals the average number of trips done by respondents in group three. And the alternative is just going to be that these means are not equal. This is step one of our classical hypothesis testing steps. Step two is this is an ANOVA. So what test are we going to use? We're going to use an F test. And we're going to have on two degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom one is going to be K minus one. We've got three groups. So the degrees of freedom one will be two. And the degrees of freedom two is N minus K. So in this case, we have 13 for N. K is 3, so we've got 10 degrees of freedom on the denominator. Our significance level is 5%. So now let's draw the F distribution. The F distribution has a different shape to the normal distribution. Here's the F distribution over here. F equals 0 is always over here. So the curve always starts over here at F equals 0, and then it increases. F is always positive. And our critical value is always going to be here and with the rejection region always in the right tail. So in our case, we need to draw our F distribution. So we can draw it like that. Our critical value is here. And we always need to have alpha in the zone of rejection. So we need to put 5% here. So what is this critical F? statistic going to be? Well, in order to do this, we can use our table. Across, uh, Table E has several pages depending on the amount of significance and also the range of the degrees of freedom differs from page to page of the table. So on this table, we see that this pertains to the case where alpha equals 5%. So this is the table that's correct for our situation where we have 5% in the tail. There's another table for when alpha equals 1% that you can use. And what we are going to do is find the corresponding DF1s and DF2s. So based on our the way that we've set up the question, we see that DF1 equals 2 and DF2 equals 10. So we go across to DF1 equals 2 and down to 10 and we see that the critical value is 4.1. So F crit equals 4.1. All right, next we need to compute the F statistic. And remember, the F statistic is the ratio of the sums of squares. So that's going to take quite a bit of work, but let's get going. So in order to calculate the between group sum of squares, SSB, we're going to apply the formula that we learned as the sum of ni 
times the deviation from the group means to the total means. What I've provided for you are the sample statistics of the three groups. So here we have the three group sample sizes and the three group means. So this is the mean number of walking trips by group one, the mean number of walking trips by group two, and so on. The first thing that we're going to have to do before we can calculate SSB is calculate the, the total mean. And the total mean is just the weighted average of the three group means. So we've got four times a half plus four times a quarter whoops, plus five times two all over the total number of observations, which is 13. And this equals two plus, excuse me, two plus one plus ten over thirteen, which just equals one. So the grand mean or the total mean for this ANOVA test is one. So over here, we just have one. So now let's do this summation. We've got N1, so four times X bar one is a half, so half minus a one, so we have minus a half squared plus uh, N2, which is four, and then we've got a quarter minus a one, so we've got minus three quarters squared plus five and three times two minus one squared. And this equals 8.25. Now we need to calculate the within group sum of squares. And to do that, we're going to apply the equation that we learned over here, which is just the group, me the group sample size minus one times the variance of, of walking trips within each group. And I've pre-computed those variances for us. So S1 squared is the variance of walking trips inside group one. S2 squared is the variance of walking trips inside group two, and so on. So this is another easy formula here. We've just got four minus one, so three times a third plus four minus one again, three times a quarter plus five minus one, four and a half times a half. Which equals three point seven five. So now we've calculated the within, the within group sum of squares and the between group sum of squares. Next is we have to form our ratio. Now our F test is the mean sum of squares, is the ratio of the mean sum of squares. So MSB is SSB over degrees of freedom one, which was K minus one. And the denominator here, the mean sum of squares within, the sum of squares within divided by n minus k, the degrees of freedom. So filling out the rest of the numbers, we have 8.25 over 2 divided by 3.75 over 10, which equals exactly 11. Okay, so our F test equals 11. That's our F. Is that in the range of acceptance or rejection? If we go back to where we set up our problem, we said that the critical value was 4.1. F equals 11. So where's our F statistic? Is it, if this is 0 over here, and this is 4.1 over here, then our F statistic is somewhere over here. F equals 11. And that's clearly in the tail of the distribution. So in step six, the answer is we reject the null. And just so that you remember what the null was, the null is that the three means are equal. In other words, the null is that it doesn't matter what urban form is,
people are going to walk the same amount no matter what the urban form is. Now we did a test that rejects that null in favor of the alternative. So all we know from the alternative is that the three means aren't equal. And in fact, urban form does affect the number of walking trips people take.